Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Let's pray together. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom good flow commits me here, have this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule, and to guide. Amen. Today I'd like to talk about um, angels and um, cultivating a devotion to them. What we know in scripture about the angels is that God has sent each of us an angel to guard us. In Exodus 23, 20 it's written, See, I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and bring you to the place I have prepared. Be attentive to him and heed his voice. Do not rebel against him for he will not forgive your sin. My authority resides in him. If you heed his voice and carry out all I tell you, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. My angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. The first role of the angel, I think, is to guard us, as, 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 as the name uh, suggests. And the, the first, the main thing that the angels guard us from is from the devil. As it says in Revelation, the huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to the earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. So we have the devil on the earth, the great dragon. And so in our times, the, the Padre Pio said about the devils that if you were to look up to the sky, it would actually be blotted out by the number of demons on it. So we're in a camp. But the more the people choose to do evil, I believe the more demons that are released in hell, the more powerful that the, the devil becomes. You see that in the vision that Pope Leo had of the devil um, coming before God and asking um, to be allowed to rule and fill power for a hundred years and increase in power. That was from about the end of the 1800s up to the present. So you see the power of the devil more and more growing. So the more the power of the devil grows, the more, the more demons are released from hell. The, the more we need to um, rely on our archangel and in fact I don't believe with our, without the protection of our archangel um, any of us could survive for a second but we'll just be glad of that men are so self-reliant we all think we, we can manage our own with our armies and our airplanes and our guns but in fact it's, it's the angels the, the army of God that, that, that makes our life possible without our Without our, um, without our angels, um, would suddenly be no more. I had a dream one time, and I dreamt I was in a, a dark place. Um, it's as though I was suspended um, in outer space, total darkness. But in the dream, a darker being moved towards me. This was the devil. And I knew his intentions was to kill me. And in the dream, it was like being electrocuted. Only it was worse than being electrocuted. It was as if every atom of my being was being torn apart. Um, as the devil tried to. But in the dream, I, I, I saw um, a light moving towards the dark being. And uh, the dark being stopped stopped coming towards me and I heard a voice very very harsh kind of crackly uh, it's hard to describe it it was very evil it, it just crackled with hate it was harsh guttural <laughs> and uh, the voice says um, from the darkness why do you bother with these cattle and the way he said cattle and he was talking about humans he was talking about me he was talking about all humans all the devil wants to do is to wipe us out. As uh, Jesus says about Satan, he was a murderer from the beginning. But the, the, the white light kind of, 
gestures, uh, darkness was appeared. I, I believe that was um, was my guardian angel protecting me, and I think if I hadn't, if the guardian angel hadn't have done that, I think I would have, I would have died at that time. Um, St. Bridget of Sweden one time had a saw a manifestation of Satan and she was asked to describe it and uh, she said he's um, darker than darkness itself which is uh, it's kind of the, the way I've seen him um, so I wanted to talk about devotion your guardian angel and over the years I, I, I've had a deeper and deeper devotion to my angel guardians you know and the more you read about them um, the more you see them in the light of the saints the more you grow to love them. Devotion to anything, devotion to a saint, um, devotion to a particular thing like the, the Passion of Christ, the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Conception, the Mother of God. Um, it's a bit like an automobile. <laughs> and if you don't use the automobile, it will fall apart. It, it, it's very, very much um, like that with your guardian angel. Um, you have to cultivate a devotion. You have to use the automobile otherwise the automobile will fall apart. So the same with your, your guardian angel. You have to develop a relationship with your guardian angel and understand that kind of where guardian angels are coming from. One of the things about guardian angels, um, you can see in the life of Padre Pio, so it's, a lot of people don't don't really know this, is that um, when you pray for something, um, God replies your prayers by the use of angels so angels are sent usually your guardian angel in order to, to um, in order to that your prayer might be answered so say you were to ask for food say you were very very hungry it's your angel guardian that will arrange that the food um, that you're to get comes to you you can see that in scripture when Jesus fasted for 40 days in the, in the desert it was the, the angels that brought him food um, then when Jesus needed comfort in the Garden of Gethsemane it was an angel that was sent to um, protect him um, when St. Joseph was in, in, in the Holy Family were in danger from King Herod it was an angel that was sent to guide them and, and show them the way uh, to escape um, to, go to, to go to Egypt when St. Peter was in prison it was an angel that was sent in response to the prayers of the church in Jerusalem at that time in response to St Peter's prayer it was an angel that was sent to, to guide St Peter out of prison so it's the same in our own prayer life and I think we've realised that our prayers you know are mediated by the angels God uses the angels God chooses to use the angels um, you know I, I think it helps a lot you know we'd be a lot more grateful to our angel guardians another thing about angel guardians that you know, and you see this again in the life of Padre Pio, is that they are messengers. That's why we see them with wings. And it's mentioned in scripture, you know, Jesus said, I see the angels ascend them and descend them from heaven. And we see it earlier on in the Old Testament. Um, I think it was the vision of Abraham. He saw them in the ladder climbing up and down. <laughs> That's the angels, if you like, um, the great stairway between us and heaven. The angels um, mediating between us and God go, going up and down in, that, in this way you know and I think if we appreciate that there it gives us a great, greater uh, much greater intensity for a relationship with the angel guardian Padre Pio um, people who, who prayed to Padre Pio as, as devotees as spiritual children while he was alive Padre Pio told him to send his, send the angel guardians to him um when they needed something. And uh, was one of the monks in the monastery says about Padre Pio that he was out in the, the garden one time and um, he seemed to be talking and one of the monks was saying, who are you talking to? And Padre Pio was saying that there was a great queue of guardian angels. Um, hundreds of people from all over the world had sent Padre Pio um, the guardian angels asking Padre Pio for things and and Padre Pio was saying that in the garden there was a big queue of guardian angels um, coming to pass on the message which I think is beautiful and the young prayer life I find these guardian angels very very good you know I mean say I went to 
ask her lady for something now we're often ask my gar guardian angel please please go to your lady and with absolute confidence you know um with the angel guardian i'll go to your lady and um present this message <laughs> you might say well why don't you just pray to your lady directly well i often do pray to your lady like everybody else uh, directly but i like to use the angel guardian because you know the angel's an angel you know we're uh, when we ask and uh, it's you know my sinner you know and we live on earth you know I have to go to confession every week but an angel doesn't have to go to confession every week because an angel stands in the side of God you know again a scripture to help us so um, I like to use my angel guardian to say that <laughs> I like to I like to use I also like to use my angel guardian to go to different people you know for instance one of the things he <laughs> which is funny you know but I like to do it anyway, but when I go into church in the morning, there's um, loads of people talking, and I get people talking in the church. People shouldn't talk in church because the blessed sacraments are. That's the way I was brought up anyway. But I, I find it distracting. I shouldn't find it so distracting, but I do. So <laughs> I always pray to the angel guardians to tell them to stop talking. And I also ask my angel guardian to go around, you know. In prayer, you know, there's one man in particular <laughs> he talks an awful lot in church. He never stops up and, and he goes from bench to bench to talk to different people like that's just what he does. And uh, I was praying to his angel guards and I often pray to his angel guards because you're not telling them to stop it because you're not telling them to stop it. And I got a feeling in prayer one time when I was ta talking to his angel guards and his guards said to me, I've tried and tried and tried but he just won't listen. <laughs> you want to get up and try? <laughs> and the angel scientist kind of exasperated. <laughs> But uh, there's a uh, there's one person he he um seen the angel guardians and she says um, an interesting thing about the angel guardians the sinners no no I don't mean just sinners I mean people who are far 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 from God who have stopped praying who are uh, living very very bad lives she says uh, she's seen them as dressed in red with downcast expressions like that which uh, I thought was interesting because the closer you are to God the better automatically your relationship with your angel guardian is and the difficulty is that um, if you break your relationship with God or if you go into mortal sin the protection and power of your guardian angel becomes so much less which is why well a good example is Satanists um, because because they renounce Christ and they formally renounce Christ by breaking the cross off and satanic ceremonies they remove the protection of the angel guardian and that that's why I think often I would expect that Satanists die young usually you know or die quickly you know I saw one woman who, who was had who I think had been a Satanist from Italy who visited Medjugorje and she was fully possessed by the devil you know she died two weeks after her seen her I would put that down to um to the partly to the part of the the, the, art, the angel guardian um being eclipsed a bit. So it's important to have a relationship, especially these days of an angel guardian. I don't think everybody just has one angel guardian. Some people have more like the Holy Father the Pope. When you go to Rome you look around you there's a there's um St Michael's castle which is the, the old fortress of the Popes and you see a great figure of um, St Michael the Archangel on top of it and you see figures of the angels in the bridge just as you go towards St Peter's if you've ever been in Rome. If you look around Rome, if you look around the Vatican you'll see um, angels all over the place but St Michael's the particular um, guardian of the Catholic Church, the protector. St Michael's called the um, God's Minister. Uh, you hear it recording the angel, uh, that would be St Michael. And you often see St Michael the scales, because uh, they say one of his roles is to judge, to judge souls, to weigh souls. C.S. Lewis, the, a, Protest, um, a great Christian from England, a great Christian writer, um, in the Screed Tape Spiders, he talks about um, the wonder, you know, of the soul when it dies, and they're looking inside, and the first thing it'll say is his guardian angel. I'd say it's probably true uh, for many for many many souls that uh, the first thing you'll see when you open your eyes and you 